episode of the Top Shooters Podcast. It's your boy, Big Head Benny, joined by my friend in Fort Collins, Colorado, the Big Duke. Big Duke, what's going on tonight, brother? Oh, I feel like we've got plenty to talk about tonight, Benny. It should be a, should be a good episode. There was a lot happening in the Top Shot world today, and, and we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, break that down for the uh, for the listeners. That is right. Again, you were listening to the Top Shooters Podcast. Um, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening in your favorite podcast player. We're going to bring this content to you uh, as many nights a week as we can. What we're doing is we're recapping our experiences in the NBA top shot world. Michael, what would you tell somebody who's just listening to this episode? Uh, Give us a brief synopsis of what um, NBA top shot is. Yes, NBA top shot is uh, a new platform that was launched by the NBA itself. Uh, And what you can do on there is essentially buy and sell highlights. Those highlights act as uh, trading cards, essentially. So different players will have different highlights, different rarities of those highlights, obviously worth more than than common ones. Uh, And basically people are buying and selling and trading those highlights uh, with each other in the community. Yeah, and basically it's doubling by the day right now. Our first episode yesterday was called The Daily Double. Um, Shout out Jeopardy, because things are doubling literally daily. So, um, you know, that's why we started this show, break things down and how things are going, and we'll show you our collection and some people that we're targeting in the market as well. Um, But, yeah, no, I know we filmed our first, or recorded our first episode last night. We're live up on the podcast, players. We appreciate any support. Toss us some likes, subscribers. and we're uh, going to keep keep busting them out, baby. So let's get uh, down to uh, business, Benny. So today, as I said, a huge day. We, um, as new people to the Top Shot world, we experienced our first, uh, I guess you could say, crash or dip, uh, as they say in the biz. Uh, and that happened today. Obviously, being pretty new, uh, it was the first one I'd ever seen. Uh, definitely freaked out a little bit. Sent you a few texts at one point um, <laughs> while it was going on, but yeah, it was it was a cool experience to see kind of how that how that happens, and and obviously uh, found out the reason why. But we'll get to that in in just a little bit. Yeah, no, I mean it's gonna go. Things are gonna go up and down. I think the big thing is is just to think about the NBA and what their market is and their worldwide audience and how few people have even heard of this so far. So, you know, there's a daily market. You can look at it, you know, like like stocks, like anything. It's going to change. But overall, you can give it time, it's going to go up. So I think your drastic text messages about sell the whole collection uh, after a little dip might be <laughs> a bit drastic. You know, things are going to go up over time. And, and you know, again today, I think uh, our collections nearly, you know, went up and almost doubled in value. At least some of the, the top pieces did. Yeah, there was definitely a recovery. Um, so to explain what really kind of happened with that dip today, um, there was a pack release announced. Uh, so people obviously started to to sell some pieces so that they could have available funds for those packs when they came out. Uh, and, and just for those that are new to it, packs are the best way to get your highlights or moments. Uh, they release packs and they, they contain three moments. They're only about nine dollars, uh, and to put that into perspective, the cheapest moment you can buy today, uh, or just before we went on air, I think was around twenty-six dollars. So for nine dollars to own three of them, uh, it's definitely quite profitable that way. But that being said, they only release five thousand packs at a time, so they're very hard to obtain. Dude, I saw some chick the other day on Twitter was like, oh, "Opened an NBA Top Shot pack and was happy about what I got, and it had like a like LeBron James inside it for three bucks." I'm like. Yeah, that's worth like, you know, like six thousand dollars, and you got it for three dollars, and it was like the most like weird generic tweet, like happy about opening my first pack, hashtag yay. Like, I just, I just want to get a pack, honestly. Like if I got that under the, if I got a pack with a LeBron for three bucks, I would have like just middle fingers, like fuck, you know, like oh, it would be huge, it would be massive. It's made $6,000. <laughs> so, yeah, so obviously people were trying to sell up some some stuff to, to get those packs. And then people started to kind of freak out and see those prices dropping and then want to sell theirs because they, they sensed they were going to lose money. And then that in turn 
wanted to push the people wanting packs down and it really drove a lot of things down um, mostly experience with the commons the rare ones seem to kind of hold their own and that's due to there, there being less of those available uh, but those commons that have sort of 800 900 listings were just diving down as people tried to get out and get some money a for packs or b because they were scared um as I said, I got a little scared and, and was kind of roaming Twitter to sort of see what was up and, and saw a couple of tweets from more experienced people um, saying that this thing is pretty common when packs come out as people try to clear up that, that space, get some get some funds back in the dapper uh, so as that they have access for those packs. Yeah. So next I want to just talk about the list of NBA players who have actually acknowledged what NBA Top Shot is. Um, so, I, I mean, Duke, if you have some more that I'm forgetting, let me know. But I think yesterday we had, you know, so far we've had Halliburton for the Kings. We had, like, Damian Lee, who's a no-namer, kind of. He used to be good at Louisville, but he does play for the Warriors. Um, others, we had uh, Josh Hart. We talked about him yesterday. Yeah. Um, I know, like, today Spencer Dinwiddie was tweeting about it. Clint Capella had a tweet that said um, – about to fire up account and get some moments. Um, you know, uh, like John Morant has quote tweeted something here. I'm just pulling up Terrence Ross. Um, like LaMelo, you know, LaMelo was talking about it. There was like a tweet about um, somebody said that a LeBron had just sold for $208,000. And Melo was like, what Bron get off that? You know, and the players are getting, they're reporting potentially 1%. So, you know, the players are the ones who are making money. This is officially licensed shit. This isn't like it's just some um, back road thing. So as long as the players keep hopping on, like imagine if LeBron would ever tweet about this, you know. He's like oh. um, the Elon Musk of our NBA <laughs> highlight currency. Yeah, he has the power to really make this thing take off if he if he gets involved. But yeah, does he have the time for this not. sort of thing? Yeah. And hopefully it's not for a while, so we can just keep trickling our collections for a little bit, and then that's and true. Hit to the moon. Um, I saw, I did see a couple of the Magic players uh, do it now as well. Yeah. Bridges was tweeting at Evan Fournier, saying that he got his moment. So they're definitely talking about it in house within that team. So yeah, definitely, it's it's starting to spread through the NBA players now as well. Yeah, I um. You, for you people watching on YouTube, you can see my beautiful hair day I got going on today. I had to ref a junior high girls basketball doubleheader in uh, our small town rural Nebraska here in Pender, Nebraska. And Top Shot's just on the mind. I'm thinking I'm going to start a junior high girls basketball Top Shot and sell moments at the school for milk cartons. <laughs> Just record all their games and take the best moments and <laughs> exactly. slice them up. Had them, had them recorded tonight, and we're going to start divvying those things out. to so lucrative market. If you want in on small town Nebraska junior high top shot, tonight's biggest moment that's going on the market, a big block charge call came sliding. <laughs> for those watching on YouTube, you can see it was a big Block. We had a late slide at the and one count the basket. That is and uh, gonna if be you're not booming. watching, he, if you're not watching, he got very animated there with <laughs> with that. Um, so that's obviously why you missed the the pack drop tonight, Benny. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, I did see that there were like sixty, or I saw on like the the Top Shot Discord, you know, the messaging system. They were like, there were like sixty to eighty thousand people in five thousand packs. So. Yeah, so I got a little story about uh, the pack drop and how that went. So uh, it was meant to be for Pacific time and it actually got pushed back to, an, uh, to, to just say soon. So it, it went from 4 p.m., uh, it didn't work at 4 p.m., then it went to saying soon. Uh, so close to 5 p.m. Pacific time, I was leaving work uh, and just happened to have the pack open, just refreshing on my phone, refreshed it a couple of times uh, and, and nothing, and then within a second, refreshed it again, and it was open. So jumped in, would have been one of the very first. I am very adamant about that, would have been one of the very first into the waiting room. Uh, the way that works is that everyone that gets in the waiting room then gets assigned a random order number or a queue number so they can line up for the packs. Being first in definitely doesn't do you any favors. So if anyone is curious about that, if it is weighted to people that get in earlier or, or things like that, it definitely does not do you any favors. Once the queue formed, I was 52,800 and something. So 
no favors for being first in. I actually uh, texted Benny, texted his sister, my sister-in-law, Holly, as well, told her to jump in. And she jumped in with about five minutes to go, five minutes after me. Uh, and she ended up being 32,000. So it is just completely random the way they do it. Seriously? Um, yep, absolutely. Wow, and that's then, great knowledge. Yeah. And so then I was 52,000 and obviously 5,000 packs and Holly ahead of me. I decided just to jump out and jump straight back in just to see where it put me. Uh, and it put me at 71,000. So there was obviously around 70,000 people trying to get the packs, as Benny said, between 60 and 80. But I can tell you it was very close to 70,000. Yeah, if you can get a pack, I mean, that, that, that's a gold mine. Um, oh, absolutely. But um, we'll celebrate the night that we get a pack. But, you know, eventually, you know, the, the demand is going to have to, you know, they're going to have to keep up with the demand. Um, but I don't know. It'll just be interesting. We'll take it day by day, you know, as of today. Um, you know, I think they're going to probably have to drop packs about, you know, every couple days. Otherwise, the marketplace is just going to go up like crazy. But, you know, they have to find a fine line. They can't just drop a billion packs and watch the marketplace tank. So, yeah, I'm sure that's a huge topic for them uh, in house is to, <laughs> right? to just, just like manage that. And, and when they do drop packs first, well, market, dude, I told you, like, could you imagine what they're doing right now? Like, their site is crashing. I'm like, I told you, I'm like, I wanted to just like apply for a job and be like, all right, pay me 60K and I'll work from home and type out all your packs moments and say, you know, Tyrese Halliburton jump shot. I'll be the guy who types a description. Yeah, absolutely. And if 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 you're listening, get get Benny on the payroll. Um, (laughs) But I did see they did tweet something uh, or or post something on their website that mentioned about payments because people have obviously been complaining about the time it's taken to receive their money. Um, And what they said was there is literally one guy working in the finance department who has to – Yeah, they said there's one guy. Um, They said we anticipated an increase in in business and things. We definitely anticipated (laughs) taking off but not this quickly. Um, so there is just one guy who has to verify accounts, obviously background check that before being able to issue payments, and it's literally one guy pushing those buttons. So See, that's why. That's, that's the reason that like you can't just put in like yes, if you put in a thousand dollars, is that money going to double and triple? Probably, but like you don't know when you can ever get that money back. You you know, we we could talk a whole episode on payments. That's why it's like man, just put in a hundred bucks or fifty bucks and like. Don't, because it's not liquid. You know that money; it could stay have to stay in there for a long time. Eventually, it's obviously going to be worth something. But you know, it's not like you can put in a hundred bucks, triple it by the you know turn it into a thousand by the end of the week, which probably is pretty uh, a good chance that that could happen. And then cash out your thousand buck. You know, like it's not it's not Robin Hood. You know, Benny's got had a few issues with Robin Hood. Yeah, we'll save that for the morons. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you do want to check out The Morons, that's one of Benny's other shows or podcasts that's up on his YouTube channel. Uh, you'll probably see it if you're watching this on the YouTube. That's on the same channel. You can go check him out. He gives out some brilliant stock advice with a couple of other morons. Brilliant stock advice. Yeah, we're just building the Garage Hustle channel, trying to get more comfortable in front of microphones and making content. It's great practice and uh, just going to keep building on it. But uh, give the channel some love. Um, in the meantime, Duke, I just have the spreadsheet that I'm pulling up here for our YouTube uh, visuals. Um, I yeah, think we so. had some more buying and selling going on today from a from a member of the Top Shooter Squad. Yeah, so I um, got excited in the morning before I headed off to work. I thought, hey, let's let's buy up a few guys, a few cheap guys, uh, and watch them go up through the day. So you know, while I'm at work, I could just casually check every now and then and and see those increases. Uh, didn't didn't play out that way, unfortunately, with the as we mentioned aforementioned crash that took place. And I wrote down some of the uh, the numbers here, and some of these players aren't probably lucrative players. But I uh, bought an Ish Smith highlight for twenty seven dollars. Uh, it got as low as twenty at one point. Al Horford bought for thirty four, got down to twenty two. Uh, Alex Alec Burks bought for thirty nine, got down to twenty six. Uh, and probably the worst one was uh, Darius Baisley thinking, hey, the, uh, thun- uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder are playing tonight, $51, and he got down to 32 at one point. So they've all come back sort of close to the buying price, but, yeah, it was a little scary when they when they all dipped at that, at that one point. So you're telling me the Ish Smith um, assist yeah, looks- common <laughs> highlight didn't have a booming market today? Yeah. Like how weird is that? 
I know, right? I was very surprising. Ish, my boy Ish would be booming. <laughs> yeah, it didn't didn't happen that way, obviously. Um, but hoping to still still make some profit on it. Ish Smith, the five eleven Simmons. <laughs> if we can get him up to thirty bucks, I'll be sure to cash out and take my dollar and run. Yeah, I love it. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically, I know, like as far as my collection goes. Uh, nothing has changed since our episode yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to listen, just holding on to three bigger pieces, uh, a Giannis uh, and two Malcolm Brogdon pieces. I know we, we talked about Brogdon having two national TV games this week. He's an underrated player. Um, so I'm probably going to try to sell him by the end of the week. Giannis, I just kind of want to hang on to um, more season long and keep that piece and use any profits from Brogdon to keep flipping and trying to find new players and things. Cause I, I think that's the fun of it. Yes. You could just get anybody and really sit on them, but I think it's fun to, you know, find a player that, um, that you think is going to have, uh, you know, be valuable and have their, uh, their, we'll call it stock price, but their top shot price go up. Yeah. And I think focusing on those more rarer pieces like you've done. Um, and, and today it proved to be much more stable. Uh, if it wasn't for that, Brogdon piece that you told me about, the one that's only uh, one of 7,500, so half the um, half the quantity of the normal ones. That kind of kept me afloat today. That one just kind of stabilized and just stayed around 250. Was about 280 to start the day, got down to about 230, uh, but now back around 250, 260. So there wasn't really as much of a worry there. And I bought it for 160, Benny got it for 90. So it definitely didn't get to crisis point. Uh, and that definitely kept me kept me sane today while those other ones were dro- dropping. Yeah. And, and just to quickly explain, because, you know, so so what what we mean by out of how many so let's say if Giannis example Giannis will have four different highlights it's the same highlight it, let's say it's a Giannis assist it's a, a nice pass from him it's the highlight a delicious a dime a, a, just a drop in a fat dime um, so there'll be four different sections so the first one is called the common and there are 15,000 of those so that's obviously going to be a little bit lower then there's like his next one up there's half of that and there will be, you know, like 7,500, I think, is the one I own. And then they cut that in half and again. And you start getting those those rares. Yeah. yeah, and then they cut it in half again. There's 3,525. They cut that again, 1430. So, you know, when we talk about rare pieces, like the Giannis I have is out of 7,500, the rare ones right now are the ones that are more stable and are going up. So, like, how we've been doing it or how, like, my collection – Started with more commons, um, use the prices, you know, increased, sold those off, and tried to just buy a few nicer pieces and shrink the collection a little bit. Yeah, and there's also once you get beyond the the common uh, ones that just reduce in number, they actually bring out um, hollows like foils, kind of like what the trading cards have. They're actually I uh, heard this today, Benny too. They're actually talking about bringing out signature ones that are signed and what that's going to be is it's going to have a little cameo from the player before the moment starts so it'll be like ish smith saying yeah hey this is ish smith and here's my moment and then it will the moment and they'll they'll be very limited but they'll be kind of like autographed ones yeah is it going to be personalized too so ish smith can be like michael cunningham i don't know who the (laughs) fuck you are but thank you for being the only person in america who bought my highlight today (laughs) I don't think I don't think it's going to go that far, unfortunately. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'd pay for you, Smith, to give me one of those. <laughs> you would, huh? I know it's like that. You know, I know that they do that, and that's how Jose Canseco has to make his money nowadays. Is you know those whatever they're called. I can't even remember. I mean, but, yeah. you know, they could. Yeah, you know, I mean, they that's something that they could go into. I think there's a lot of different ways Top Shot's going to grow. But moral of the story is, um, you know, it's. We are at the floor, and um, I think the ceiling is high. Yeah, absolutely, and, and we kind of saw that today with, with things dipping for the packs, but then sort of stabilizing and then going back up, above and beyond. Yeah. All right, well, I think that's been a pretty productive episode, Michael. I know you kind of made a little bit of a sheet for us. Did we get through everything? Is there anything else you wanted to touch on? No, that's that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it was again informative, and uh, you know the viewers were were tuned in and interested with what we had to say. 
Yeah, again, find us in the podcast players. Uh, check it out. I don't know if we'll have an episode up tomorrow. We'll try to get them up as much as possible. It's my uh, beautiful wife's birthday tomorrow. Happy 25th to uh, to the missus. So um, we might have to take tomorrow off as a day of holiday. Um, and um, yeah, probably be that's back understandable. on Wednesday for uh, some Top Shooters pod. Yeah, well, hopefully we don't have any big news tomorrow. Hopefully there's no no more crashes and and but I mean I was gonna say hopefully no pack drops, but we do want pack drops. We want and pack drops, yeah. If we if if I get a pack, I'll I'll run it solo tomorrow and and yeah. go through the pack details. So no, if packs come out, I'm ditching Paige's birthday. And, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna fire on and try to give me a pack. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hey, um, it's my birthday. I thought we were going out to dinner. No, happy sorry, packs birth. are dropping. Right, the whole family says, "Happy birthday!" <laughs> I got a pack. <laughs> Imagine though, that it may, uh, you might have some birthday luck. Who knows? Right, I know. But well, with no further ado, we're gonna hit the outro, and we'll yeah. see you in a couple days again. Please, please give us uh, some love on the socials. Um, check us out. Right, the boys. Give us a comment. Free, yeah, feel free to give like. us comments. Comments. Uh, if you have any any questions or anything, uh, we we got a couple of comments yesterday. So feel free to keep uh, keep them coming. That's right. This is the Top Shooters Podcast. It's your boy Big Hit Benny signing off. Peace.